All right, welcome back to another episode of Conversation with Jay. I got another special guest in the building. I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. How you doing? My name is Love Child, formerly known as Willie Neal. All right, so let's start right there. All like, right. Why why the name change? Because I know a lot of artists, they, they go and they rebrand, but it all it don't always transition. So sometimes that rebranding can be difficult. Uh, the reason for me, uh, okay, first of all, Willie Neal is my name. And when you Google Willie Neal, it's going to be an artist that's going to pop up named Willie Neal Johnson. <laughs> and his ass, he put a lot of work in, so <laughs> he was in the way. So I just went in with a nickname that my mama used to call me, Love Child. She used to call me the Love Child out of all my siblings. Now, did did the Love Child name work better because you are technically like an R&B artist? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Now, at what age did you start like making music? I've been I've been into music since I was like seven, like for as long as I can remember. Like my my mother used to manage my uncle, my uncle was a singer, so I used to watch them rehearse in the living room and all that type of shit. So that's where the passion came from. Yeah, just watching them go out and win talent shows, and then my uncle signed a deal with Death Row. I watched, you know what I'm saying? I just watched all that, and I've been trying to do music ever since. Having a having a family member that's been in the industry, did you learn a lot about the industry actually before you got into it? I'm talking about as far as like the business go. Yes, definitely. Like I've been with ASCAP since I was 16. Like I, I knew it been a yeah I knew about publishing. I've been knowing about you know a lot of stuff because I watched my uncle get get fucked over with a lot of it. So watching from his mistakes. All right, so you was ahead of the game then. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I don't have a deal. I feel like. Because I, I got my, I let my mouth get in the way too fast with a lot of situations. Right. Like I started letting people know I knew too much about what was going on. So if somebody came to you <coughs> with a deal right now, would you be open to it? If it made sense. I won't say I wouldn't, but I know how the money come now. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the whole, that's really what it is. Everybody want to hold you off on knowing where the money coming from. Right. And once you know that information and you know what to feed to get the money, you kind of just, if you go and you, if you're going to use any type of deal, it's just investment for advertisement and stuff like that. It's not really, I don't need money to produce anything or to actually make the product. Right. So you say you, you had ASCAP since you were 16, so I'm assuming you made your first song around that time. Yeah, well, I mean, that wasn't the first song I made, but that was the first. My uncle put me into into the writing and publishing game that, then at that time. But I had already been writing. Right. But then it was a song I wrote with him. And that was, the, like, you used to have to have a song that was out and published in order to even be in ASCAP back then. Right. And then that was the whole way, like, I basically crept in because I wrote on something that he did. And, and then that little piece helped me in. Like, it wasn't just, you could just send a payment and now you in ASCAP. It wasn't like that deal. Now, you were originally from Mount West, right? Yeah. So let's talk about how it was growing up out there. Shit, <laughs> Shit wow. As far as what? What part? So, as <coughs> as a grown man compared to how you was growing up, do you see any change in the West Side? Shit. Not too much, honestly. Like, it's, it's I mean, it's more, it's a little more shooting. But it, as far as, a, it's the, it's always been drugs. It's always, the West Side never been sleep. Okay. It's always been like that. But, like, I always had my mother, though. Like, I, I, I'm thankful as hell for my mother. Like my mama was on me. So it was like a lot of shit that people was doing. Or a lot of shit that older people was allowing certain people to do, they wouldn't even right. allow me to do because of the pressure my mama was putting on me. Right. Now, I know, uh, like right now, we got a lot of carjacking, carjackings in the city. And I know when I was coming up, like my mama had us doing some of everything. Like we played baseball. I didn't want to do that shit, but I grew a love for it. It was, we can go to the park, be that from sun up to sundown, hooping all day. Now it seems like the kids don't have an outlet as far as a place to actually play in, be a kid nowadays. Right. And now they come find to the um to the crib like On with the all the snow. You know what I'm saying? With all the snow, like I was <clears> looking <throat> at the kid. I'm like, bro, y'all don't want to go play in the snow. Uh, that's what I, we used to be outside sledding and. Doing snowball fights, all type of shit. Doing, Ain't none of that going on now. Doing any and everything just not to be in the crib. Yeah. The crib was the boring yeah, like, part. Yeah, you could you go in the house to go to bed. It's time to take a shower, eat, go to sleep, shit. You outside all day as a kid. Now having having 
being a father in Chicago, you know what I'm saying, it comes with its own difficulty. So I don't know exactly how old your kids are, but I have a, a 13 year old. She's actually she actually lives in Rockford, and I got a a, a nine year old, and he lives in the city with me. So it's kind of difficult to to say go outside and play. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so much shit going on. So True. like, do you face those same issues? I did when I just had my kids in the city with me. See, but like, <clears throat> I, I got a house in the suburb too, and like they hit there now. They still in school in the city though, but like right. because they able to do it over the computer on, over the computer shit. I love that shit. Yeah. Honestly, I hope it stay like that. Like, cause I take my kids out of town now, like all during the week and shit. And they just bring the computer <laughs> yeah, they just with bring them. the computer. As long as you stay on, it's way better for me. Yeah. Like for what I'm trying to do anyway, it's way better. But like now. It's not it's not as much, but I know exactly what you're saying. Like in the city, yeah. you gotta worry about that because fuck might pull up shooting at somebody on down the street and your kids outside. But like in the suburbs, it's a little bit different. I mean, you still got worries. Yeah. You gotta worry about creeps, right. shit like that now, uh, or the police getting on your kids because they black. So it's a it's 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 gonna autumn. It's gonna always be something to be worried about anyway as a parent. 